We're live. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking to cosmetic surgeon from Newport Beach, Dr. Thomas Barnes. A lot of media attention. People are looking years younger without surgery. And we're talking about uh, a PRP injected into your face looking years younger. And you say this is real. I mean, it's happening. It's real. I've done it myself. There are some stem cells. They take your own blood. Just so I know, we're trying to dummy this down for me. Okay. They're taking your own blood. It's spun in some special... Centrifuge. Okay. Right. And then the RN or the doctor injects it into their face. Doctor. Doctor injects it. And what happens then? I mean, well, what's the appearance? <clears throat> Basically, whenever you have, first understand, any damage in the body, the platelets are generally there first. And they re they're these little guys that clot, cause clots so you don't bleed to death. But they also release these growth factors. There's more than a dozen of them. And they cause all these other cells that regenerate tissue to come to come like a remote response and they all come like like lights and sirens to repair tissue so when we use the the platelets when we inject them under the skin or if I do a laser procedure I just take them and I spread them over the face like a your own personal bandage so you rub it on uh, rub it on and it heals like twice as fast okay absolutely and so we're, we're using the body's own healing factors like I said before it's your own personal pharmacy we're just using the strategy of the body and now we can focus it to reheal the face to make it look younger, smaller pores, less wrinkling. And I and I tell you, if you look at my face now, now I we, was going to say it looks a lot better. It looks a lot better, and all, the only well, thing, it looks great. I, I shouldn't say it looks a lot better. It looks good. It looks great. Well, it that's what I'm hearing from people, and I've actually counted the pores on my face with <laughs> equipment. Oh, you, you can count pores. You can count pores and what they look like and how big they are and wrinkles. And I'm working on a study right now to show the difference of PRP in the appearance of the face. Now we all say at the meetings, oh look how good it looks, but uh, now I'm doing the first study where I'll actually document the improvements, the changes. Uh, just like I released a study uh, this last uh, two weeks ago in Coronado Island, a big international um, uh, cosmetic surgery conference that's turned liposuction upside down. We know all that fat we're throwing away. If we know the PRP works and we know we can take stem cells out of our own fat, which is the other half of the formula, okay. PRP, stem cells. We've been throwing that fat away for years. And with it, all the stem cells. Now we have a way we can take the stem cells out so we can use the PRP and the stem cells to rejuvenate your face without cutting. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so now in your office. In my office, yeah. When you're doing a liposuction. Yeah, Newport Beach, California. In the old days, you would throw away the... Not the old the days. Everybody's still throwing it away. Oh, I'm yeah. not. As of a couple months ago, You're giving it back to the patient. I did not know we would find millions of stem cells per cc. All we have to do is a process we've developed. I won't go into that now. It's okay. a proprietary process. You don't but, think I would understand it? Uh, I'm joking. I'm afraid I'm joking. you will understand it, and you're <laughs> going to go out and do this. <laughs> I'll okay. steal your idea. So okay. now I call it. And this is a book that I'm going to be writing. Actually, I started it called Your Own Personal Pharmacy. Okay. And that's your own healing cells and all it can do for you, not only your face to make it look better, but also this is what's going on when you see uh, these high-priced athletes getting these treatments for their joints and their muscle and their aches and pains. It heals anything. And now we have access to it. And now we know so the fat in, in traditional is the medicine, answer. I've met orthopedic surgeons. They that don't are believe saying, in this. No, but there are some now that are saying when we inject right. this PRP in right. the area, right. the wound heals faster. Orthopedic surgeons generally are using PRP and these and, and these other techniques at the end of a surgery and then closing for better wound healing. It's actually the non-surgeons, sports medicine doctors, that have been doing this for years and they're pushing the frontier forward. Regrowing cartilage, uh, regrowing tendons, uh, etc. But we're here to talk about cosmetic but surgery. But for the face though, so the face yeah. You use it, okay, so you have hollows under the eyes, mm -hmm. you have sun damage. Right. So how is this used together with everything else you're doing? Well, that's a good point because combi therapy or combination therapy is huge today, going to be even bigger. Everybody wants to take ideally a day or two off, three days off work, and they want a big bang for their buck, and they don't want to do some heavy, dangerous, potentially risky procedure if they don't have to, and they want to do it awake. So now we know by adding some laser on the surface, fractional CO2 laser, maybe even just a simple IPL for brown spots, that will ignite this fuse to stimulate these platelets that we've injected to do their thing along with your own stem cells that are in all the facial fat. 
So we can now perhaps do just some heating of the skin, add the platelets, your stem cells are already there. Heating with some of the laser technology? Yeah, any of them. Okay. Any of like them. Like ultrasound, things like that that they're any, using? Anything that warms the dermis and gets heating deeper will help uh, release the platelets growth factors and that's the game for about seven days to two weeks they're just letting go all these growth factors and that stimulates the healing in the face and it takes 30 days to 60 days to really see the improvement but what you're going to see is people coming in probably uh, every other month for a simple PRP draw a little blood take out the platelet rich plasma inject it where you want to improve your appearance of your skin and your face very simple so about every other month that's where I think we're going to go with so this. So now you said I need to go out there to Newport Beach and see you. Yeah, Newport Beach. Yeah. Okay, so you go there. Take me through that process. Okay, so around the eyes. You know, everybody wants to look younger. Mm -hmm. I'm almost 50 now. So what do you do? You don't look it. Well, I've, you know, I've had some work. You just no, I'm PRP. kidding. I've had some IPL, and I had a PRP, actually. Just one. I told okay. you last Friday. You know, oddly enough, it works best on people who need it least. And that's because the younger you are, the better your own stem cells respond. The older you are, the more you need to stimulate those cells. The day will come, and I want to get into this just real quick. Okay. Just dream with me for a second. This is good. And we're building a new company. It's going to be called, well, it is called Cell Vita Life Sciences. It's going to be an international company. I'm going down to the Philippines in the next few weeks. And we're going to launch this there internationally. We're going to be freezing your fat and maybe some bone marrow cells. And we can take that back anytime, culture and grow your own cells, use them in your body. Because at some point, if you keep taking cells out, taking blood out, you don't want to run out of cells. So we'll have a limitless su supply. And people will be going back to that well, that frozen cells, and they'll be doing life maintenance so that your joints never get bad, so you never have aches and pains as you age. So. And and also, you believe this. I mean, you believe I, this. It's happening. And, and, yes, heart and soul. Are there things happening in Europe right now that we're not allowed to do yes. here and that you're not allowed to do? This is already starting in Europe. Okay. But there's a lot of people, they're even using sheep embryonic stem cells in Europe. So there's a lot of hooey, too. So I think we need American know-how, and we need to do this right. And that's what we want to do with cell When I see, you're a stem cell expert. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. When I see stem cell creams over the counter. Hooey. It's not true? Who we? You cannot really? put, you cannot put a human cell in anything without having the FDA chasing you down. Well, how do they get away with it? I've seen stem cell well, creams. I, I and I know the one of the physicians in, involved in marketing the product. I don't see the commercials anymore. Okay. So it's come and gone on TV. Uh, you cannot have a stem cell per se in a cream um, without having a human product biologic in that cream you cannot do that legally okay. but are there any prescription no stem cell creams not now okay now one day and this is coming too, we will have your own personal pharmacy cream your own cells will be growing your own cytokines are growth factors and there are more than 120 that have been described your own growth factors form a soup as you culture your own cells okay now you can take that soup add it to a cream and you have your own private pharmacy that you can use any time. Okay, that makes sense. That's where it's all going. It's all going to that. Most creams are just moisturizers. And the stuff they say that's going to penetrate are just going to sit on the top of the skin. So if you're using your own stem cells, you're going to get a better result, obviously. Well, adult autologous stem cells mean you use your own stem cells. That's key. We're not talking about embryonic stem okay. cells. Your own. Now. You know that I've done a lot of research on this, and, and I have a limited understanding, though, of stem cells. This is brand new to me, and a lot of the emails we get are about stem cells. It is the future of medicine. Okay, so right now, yes. what's hot across the country is going into the dermatologist, the plastic surgeon, cosmetic surgeon, getting a fractionated laser, ultrasound, or something that heats the, the face, make, forces the body to help fix this burn by laying down new collagen. Am I, am I getting this right a little bit? Uh, new, I mean, co your, new collagen is only part of the story. Okay. There's al also and plus tightening of the skin. Yeah, developing the uh, extracellular matrix ground substance, which is hyaluronic acid. We talked about that in the last okay. show. Most experts dismiss that. It is true. The sponginess of the skin is not collagen. The flexibility is the hyaluronic acid we make. Okay, ourselves. so these machines will enhance that. Your body heating stimulates the fibroblasts of the skin. 
to do what they do to try to make the skin like it once was. Okay. Now you add this part about makes it do better. Your own stem cells better, and now it does it better. Synergy, your own personal pharmacy. That's where it's all going. Exactly. Do you think you could stop or slow? The, I, I met a dermatologist in uh, San Francisco, and he says, "Randy, the future is coming." He goes, "And I think it's here now." He goes, "But people will think I'm crazy." We had to say this off camera. He goes, "But I think you, I could take a person 40, and in 10 years, they're going to look about. There's going to be a little bit of a reversal. They'll look about 35 to 40." But they're gonna, we're going to stop the appearance of aging. He said the future, will, what it'll hold, is it'll be very hard to identify somebody's age. Do you believe that? Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, but cell therapy, and that includes stem cells, that includes uh, using your own platelets from the blood, okay, and how they work together, cell therapy will be center stage in medicine. I know these guys. I lecture internationally. I've just been invited to lecture in Paris at the end of this month. And um, I can tell you right now, uh, this is the buzz, cell therapy, and I know the guys using it for heart attacks, for congestive heart failure, strokes, Parkinson's, and they're getting results, multiple sclerosis. Sclerosis, they're getting wow. results internationally using your own stem cells. Help me understand this then. Okay, so the face. Right. You got the skin aging. Yeah. Okay, so now we can take care of that, I guess, with some of the newer technology. We can reverse. Collagen is starting to, to fall away or go away. Thinning, right? thinning, of, thinning the of the tissues. But then you've got the muscles underneath that are starting to fall, the fat pads, with gravity. How do stem cells take care of that? Okay, so if that's falling, but you have great looking skin. Uh, very good point. The easiest thing to do, in my opinion, after 16 years in this business, is maintenance. If you start earlier and do these things, well, we already do maintenance. We cut our hair, we wear sunblock, these are maintenance. Maintenance would mean back to life maintenance. You have a PRP treatment every other month, or if you want to be a little more aggressive, you have some of your own fat drawn, your own stem cells removed, regenerative cells. There's millions and millions of cells per little cc of blood, okay? And you have those injected too. You're really doing maintenance. But is it going to hit the muscle, maybe? It's going to go down to the muscle, we believe. Okay. No one has assayed this. Okay. No lab has. Because it's too new, I guess, for the long term, or no? Well, I mean, to, to say this? The way your tissues maintain now is under the, what we call the trophic effect, or the effect. You, everyone knows about growth hormone dropping and testosterone, right? We yeah. know about estrogen dropping. Well, everything's dropping as we age. We hit a peak at about 40 years old. Okay? So how do we keep this trophic effect, keep things stimulated? And that's adding back those growth factors, okay? That's what keeps everything on a daily basis maintained. So we're adding growth factors. I believe those growth factors, if we give them in enough numbers, enough cells, they're getting around to all the tissue and helping it maintain a more youthful function and appearance. That's it. Really? Really. And this, and this doesn't have to be that expensive either. No. No, it doesn't. I mean, this, this maintenance program. I mean, no. but, but back to the 40-year-old that comes to see you, the 35-year-old that comes to see you, you say, which is ideal. Right? The young starting earlier? Starting can, earlier can is better. Can you keep them looking 35 till they're 50 maybe? I mean, if they take care of themselves in a perfect world. Yes. It, we're, okay. we're, we're slowing the progression. And what we're working on is what is the secret to keeping your own stem cells active? What can we add? Because it's really all about keeping the cells that heal on a daily basis. When anything goes on, there's millions of cells that are on the lookout for changes in the tissue, and they want to make it right. Okay. We're just giving them a strategic boost using your own cells and what products your own cells make. That's what this is. It's adult, uh, uh, your own adult cells making products that we're putting back in you. It's not embryonic. Stem okay, cells. so the patients, that, and by the way, for people watching this, uh, what's the website to find more about you? Oh, lunchtimemakeovers.com. Lunchtimemakeovers. You can also com. you can find me on YouTube. Just type in Dr. Thomas Barnes videos, and then you'll work a few steps. You'll find my uh, YouTube channel, and I talk about this on there. Uh, and also, I have 30 or 40 videos on there. And also, you can find my YouTube channel straight from my lunchtime makeovers uh, lunchtimemakeovers.com. But also my Facebook pages. I have Dr. Thomas Barnes as my public site and also just Thomas Barnes and come join me there. I'm going to be putting a lot of information about my new studies. I just gave two talks, one on PRP to an international audience. So Dr. Thomas Barnes on Facebook. 
and Thomas Barnes. Okay, I have T H O M A S. A, right, Barnes. And, yeah, okay. and and I just gave the talk about fat, which has never been done before, proving the number of stem cells that not only are in fat, but how can we, in an easy, simple way, access those cells so we can put them back in you, and so we don't throw out the baby with the bath. Okay, so somebody gets liposuction, which you do a lot of. Every day. In your, okay, every, every day. day. Okay. Not just on me, but, but, but on, on you, others. Not just on you. <laughs> Where, do you, where are you putting the fat? I put it anywhere it's needed. Uh, uh, under the I, eyes? Under the eyes is common. For people, if you look at the... guys are afraid of the eyes? Uh, I'm not. Well, you have to understand the anatomy. No, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm a cosmetic surgeon. I'm trained in the muscles and the anatomy of the face. My favorite subject in medical school, okay? Favorite of all was anatomy, histology. I loved those things when the other guys said, man, you're crazy. You study all the time. But now it's all coming back, you see? Because interesting, medicine is interesting to me again because now we have a way to do something about so many things. Not just aging of the face, but other areas of the uh, human body and diseases with your own cell therapy, you're using your own tissue. Where are you going in five years? Tell me about your practice in five years. In five years, uh, I believe I'll be doing a lot more research because I've got the bug with cell therapy now because I know it works. Well, that's all you talk about. I've been I mean, I called you for this interview and, 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 and you were so passionate about right, this. Right, right. Well, it's a chance to spread the word because I'll tell you, I just worked on a celebrity political individual. Um, I can't mention anymore because everyone will know who it is. Uh, and we treated his knees and his torn ligaments uh, in, my, um, in my office. Okay, politician with bad knees. We'll figure out who he, that is. Okay. Well, a celebrity <laughs> politician family. Okay. And the um, point is, he went to a famous university to check me out and said, what do you guys know about this stem, this cell therapy approach without surgery of knees, hips, whatever? And they said nothing. And you would be surprised if I told you what that university was. That university is the highest endowed in billions and billions of dollars and the most technically advanced university with the most money on the planet. They know nothing about adult stem cells, nothing. So all this physician innovation, it's called, is going on mostly in private offices. That's where it's going on. And that's where the, the papers are coming out, you see? Papers, drug companies aren't supporting us. With all due respect to all the great drugs that are out there that help, help ameliorate the effects of various diseases on the body. Now with cell therapy, we actually have a way to help cure disease, decrease okay. disability and pain. I interrupted you, but in five years, your practice, you'll be researching. Will you still be in cosmetics? I'll be in research, and I would love to take this story worldwide on how we can decrease pain, suffering, and disability in human beings. With platelet-rich plasma? And regenerative cells. It all goes together. I mean, for the good stuff, do you have to go into the spine, or do you have to go into the bone marrow? Is that where the good stem cells Boy, are? That's a whole other conversation. The stem cells in the blood are fewer in number, but very potent for developing new blood vessels. This is going to get you good. Recent studies show that in, when you have PRP injected, some of the bone marrow stem cells are also going to get in the act, come all the way from the bone marrow and help. So the body is a, okay. the body's this closed system with this amazing, I'm going to, intelligent design in my opinion amazing feedback system. I call it a liquid crystal. Okay, It's not a solid. And we go along in life with this thing we call the spirit and the soul and the ability to live for, F, uh, for so many years. And um, we don't know where we go, but we know by using the magic of human healing, we can strategically prolong that life and have us look better during those years. That's the story. Is that right? Okay. Cell therapy. So stem cell therapy, and it's called goes by the name of PRP. Well, PRP is platelet-rich plasma, which is hot right now and getting hotter. Okay, and um, if you can't if you can't find a doctor in your, your community and you'd like to try something like this, well, people can, travel to see you. Yeah, they do. I, I, you know, interestingly enough, I have all these people coming from the Middle East, Saudi Arabia. So princes you, and you things like that. You numb their face. These princes, I, okay, you numb they, their face. They come on in, we numb the face with numbing cream, just like you're going to have a photofacial, perhaps, okay? And then we numb it about 15 minutes, just so the little needle, which is the same one we use for Botox, it's not that big a deal. Men tend to have a lower threshold of pain. Women are just fine without it. So we put the cream on people who believe they need it. And um, then I make multiple injections, depending on where I want the PRP to go. And some people I'll also take a little body fat and I'll add that 
and I'll inject that under the skin if they need it in this area to help build wow. up the cheeks, pull the face up. It really, it's custom work depending on what an individual needs. Then we focus natural healing on what and there's need. no down, very little downtime. A day, maybe. Do you always do it in combination with laser therapy or fractionated laser therapy? Yeah, we tried to. When we did it to me, and remember, I'm the first doctor who used heating and undermining the tissue with liposuction of the neck and tummy. And you're wearing no makeup, by the way. No. People have to know, he just came in here at the last minute, and these lights will show every crease in your face, but your face looks good. Thank you. Have you. Very, and I know your age, so you look Thank years you. younger than your age. Yep. So you've had this done, but why every other month? Help me understand that. Is it because it wears off? Remember, I talked, about, I talked about the, the importance of the body having a trophic effect, or like the pituitary gland in women. It makes these follicle stimulating hormones, and so the ovaries can produce the estrogens and whatnot. That's a trophic influence that we have. And at some point, our growth hormone production or testosterone in men, we need these follicle stimulating hormones for that coming from the pituitary. At some point, they start dropping, or the organ that produces these. Uh, hormones stops producing them. So we've lost the trophic effect to maintain tissue, the tissue that those things maintain. Think of the stem cells the same way. In time, they become less active. Aging proceeds. Interesting combination of events, isn't it? It's logical. So by us taking those cells, stimulating them more using heat, we know heat will stimulate them, then we got combination therapy. So we might be able to avoid cutting. Now, sometimes somebody needs cutting. If their face is way down here, that's beyond what we can do. We can't okay. put Humpty Dumpty back together in some scenarios. But then I can add a smaller cut, less of a facelift, if we do the transfer with fat, your own stem cells, PRP mixed together. So, okay, like, and I'm not trying to compare it to, but when you get Restylane, let's say, for nasolabial folds, or whatever you guys use there, what do you use there? For this I, area. I, I like Juvederm. Okay, Juvederm. Okay, so Juvederm. Wrestling, I guess, is under the eyes. Uh, no? I use Juvederm too. It's, uh, the mantra seems to be some people feel that the Juvederm is more hydroscopic. What that means, scopic, is it means hydrophilic, that it loves to absorb water. So whatever you put here may end up being a little bit too much. But I like Juvederm. A lot of guys okay. use Restylane. Now that lasts like six months, I a have year. it last two years. Okay, two years. Yeah. But more. with stem cells. Right. Are you saying every month and a half to come in well, to keep that rejuvenation well, going on? That means are you going to see a reversal, a continued reversal? We don't know now, but we think that, remember I said trophic effect, under the direction to stay healing, to stay, to stay active, the cell growth, we may need to pulse it again in three or four months. But maybe it's going to be two months. Maybe if you really want to build up tissue under here, and improve the appearance of the overlying skin, maybe it's gonna be every month for a while. This is a new science. if somebody science. comes 35 and they look good, you may only have to do this a couple times a year? Think of Botox. Okay. Think of cutting your hair. That's life maintenance. And these are things we can do now with living tissue rather than with Botox. <laughs> is where this we... the new aging gracefully, by the way? Yeah. The new aging gracefully is not aging. Okay. Ooh, it's not aging. That's right. And I'll add, sometimes a treatment, new treatment, arrows in the quiver for treatments, is no treatment, right? Okay. I do that all the time today. No treatment can be a treatment. When the women come in and their lips are so big, I'll say, that's yesterday. I, I will, love those women. Boy. I will I'm not joking. do that anymore. It, it doesn't look right. It's like we say, the worst thing in the world with your cosmetic patient is to be asked those worst six, the worst six questions you can ever be asked by a friend. What are you supposed to be? Okay, so my point is, sometimes we say no, no more of that. Well, what can do I do? Do women like that? Do they think that makes them look younger? Some do. Because it doesn't. It's Some terrible. Some do, but we're over that hump after Lisa Rena had the silicone removed from her lips. I think a lot of women have backed off from the large lips. But now, uh, now we can add the PRP that helps pull the face up. We can even take some Juvederm or Restylane and add it to the PRP together. What would you do to me, by the way? That's the vampire facelift. What would you I do would to you? You would vampire me? No, what would you do? I think you look pretty good. But okay. you, could, you, you could consider life maintenance, tissue maintenance, with PRP. So like every other month. That's right. And, and, and you told me, and I'm, I'm going to put you in the spot, that you would give a discount for people to come off this, the viewing of this. Yes. If they go and like your Facebook page. Right. Is that right? Yeah. 
at Dr. Barnes. Mm -hmm. What is it again, the Facebook? Uh, you can go to either one of the two. Uh, either way is interactive, interactive with me, Thomas Barnes, or you can go to Dr. Thomas Barnes, which is my public page. Sign up there and contact me and you will get a discount on whatever you do. And is there a way we could talk a little, because this were a live show, a little bit about how expensive this could be or inexpensive sure. this could be? Sure. The prices vary uh, with PRP. So from, every month and a half is... is uh, if you choose to do it. Now, there'll okay. be people who really don't need it. This is a new science when I say don't need it. You might do it once, enjoy the effect, and do it again in six months or a year. And there are others that come in and say, I want everything I can do and I can afford that. So we need to create an opportunity uh, to work with each person in a custom way. Not everybody's the same. Not everybody needs Botox every three months. Some people need every six months. So okay. that's, that's custom aesthetic uh, work, basically. So how much every time? Could okay. it be? On a low end. On PRP a low end. alone around the country is anywhere from $1,000, probably $800 to $1,000. If you add a filler with it, it's, you're going to be approaching $1,500 to $2,000. Okay. If you add fat transfer with that, now you're looking at, depends on just here, maybe that's about $1,800 to $2,000. But if you're adding fat, you're looking at a one-time deal. Okay. If you are doing fat around the cheeks and face, maybe that's $3,000 for this area. Whole face could be anywhere from um, five thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars depending on whom you go to okay across the country whether it's LA New York wherever but you do want to go to a person who's done a lot of this and can prove it to you somebody who's training other doctors so they have to have some prowess and ability with this please do not go to somebody who just took a one-day course because if you don't get a good result you're gonna assume it's because it doesn't work Okay, so it'll give PRP a bad name. So go to somebody with a lot of experience. Exactly. But there's not a lot of guys out there with a lot of experience. I mean, uh, you're probably the busiest PRP guy yeah. in well, California. Well, I, I did PRP back in 1995 and 96 when I was in my fellowship in cosmetic surgery training. Is that right? Yeah. But back then it was um, my mentors. Uh, they got a lot of flack from the medical board in California uh, because they thought back then it was unproven witchcraft. Obviously, it's been well proven since. It's safe. It has a, a positive effect on tissue. Uh, so I was doing it way back in the early days when we used a huge machine to process it. Now, by the way, we just draw, depending on one of six or eight different companies that produce a mechanism to do PRP, some of them it's a simple a one tube of blood or two t little tubes. We spin it down and we can just inject it. Are there people that go in for Restylane or Juvederm and all they need is PRP? Has that happened yet? or you're doing combination therapy? It depends if they need volumizing. People that need volume, like let's look under your eyes if we could do that okay. just for a second. You could use, like me, a like little I more volume done. here. Yeah. Yeah. So I might want to, because PRP is more improve the appearance of the tissue, improve the tissue, okay? okay. Stimulate the tissue to reboot mm -hmm. itself, if you will. So if I want to really volumize, I would put either fat or, or uh, Juvederm or Restylane along here, and then I would add the PRP. When I add, when I do the fat, by the way, I mix it with the PRP together. Really? And then okay. I inject it right where I want it. And that's an instant result, right? Oh, the filling is when is, you're adding fat under the eyes. Yeah. Well, so is the filler. The filler is in, instantaneous to volumize. Now, but adding fat under the eyes is that a bigger bruising time? Adding, well, either one, again, depending on technique, the doctor needs to understand anatomy. He needs to try not to go right through the ubicularis muscle, try to go under it if he can up here and sneak up deep over the bone. So you're just taking the upholstery and you're raising the upholstery. You don't want somebody, or with all due respect to nurses, I, I believe this is, doctors should be injecting these things around the eye because you can have bleeding, you can have really untoward results. You need somebody who understands anatomy, has done a lot of this, if they're working on now, your face. Now, I know some guys that say, I don't like to go in that area because there's a nerve. You could cause paralysis. Uh, not so much the nerve. I, no? they, okay. they, I, I will, that was my number one section in med school. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strut my stuff. Okay. Not a nerve, danger of bleeding. Oh, really? Okay. Danger of bleeding because people, when you have an eyelid lift, you can do a great eyelid lift, but if they go home and do jumping jacks or move furniture, you could raise your blood pressure and start bleeding back here, and you can lose the vision in an eye. There have actually been some cases when people are injecting around the eye and have that problem because 
they're not following a patient closely. And I don't want to scare anybody. It's like one out of you know hundreds of thousands. But these are risks, and you should have a trained professional doing injections in the face. How are patients finding out about PRP now? About injecting, and for people just tuning in. Well, let's go back to the show okay. where, where I was censored, yeah. with all due respect. Okay. I want to talk about the vampire facelift. It was a good friend of mine who came up with the name and trademarked it, and he's given me the right to use it. Vampire facelift. Vampire facelift, and believe it or not, people come in, they want the vampire. <laughs> because they get the okay. idea of the blood. They don't call and say, I would like that PRP and mix it with some of that filler <laughs> and put it in my face and improve the pores. Okay. They, you know, because it's been discussed, it's been in the New York Times. I was interviewed and with a patient before and after in the um, Orange County Register a couple months ago. And then I've created the Venus facelift, which is, which is a tr trademarked uh, name. Uh, and the Venus facelift, or the Venus butt lift, if you will, and the Venus hand lift <laughs> is when I take fat and mix it with PRP. And why do you call it Venus? Because I think Venus is a, is a, is a well-known brand, a uh, beautiful woman. Okay. Uh, a beautiful woman, think of Venus de Milo, with arms, and <laughs> in a man, it's the Eros lift. Okay, but let, okay, but back to this vampire lift. Right. This is the hot lift. This is, is loved and hated. There are doctors that don't like the name, but the reality is people come in and ask for what is simple. Just like when we started with photofacial, they didn't come in and say, "I want impu uh, impu uh, intense pulse light." Intense, thank you. Intense pulse light with broad spectrum light from approximately 500 nanometer wavelength to 950. Their understanding was photofacial. My good friend uh, Patrick Bitter, dermatologist, Northern California, came up with that term, the photofacial. So if we can work in sound bites, people can get their mind around it. So the vampire lift, ask for it. They yeah. ask for it. Vampire face. And, lift. and what they're asking for is to have platelet-rich plasma injected all around their face. Mixed with a filler. Mixed with a filler. That's what that procedure is. At the same time? That's, well, you do the filler first. It doesn't first. interfere with the oh, filler first. Filler first. Then you add the uh, PRP or the platelet mix. In and around the site where you injected the filler? Exactly. That's wow. right. Simple. And my Venus. What about bruising there? Because that sounds like a good one. Well, it, Maybe gets, I need that. it gets down to your injector. If you're doing around the cheeks here, it, usually we don't see it. But if you're under the eyes, remember this obicularis muscle it's called. That's the one that causes crow's feet. That's the one that helps blink the eye. That's the one that helps lower the brow. Yeah. And that's why you hear this Botox brow lift. We release the depressor here, and that's why it can drift up. We inject it over here. That's why we get the crow's feet. We don't want to inject too much under here because the orbicularis tone is what helps hold up the eyelid. And if you wipe that out, you can actually have more wrinkling and the eyelid drop. I think the injector should be an expert in this area or they shouldn't inject it. Okay. And, and you can inject the PRP in this area carefully or the fat, I like to come in with a small poke hole and I come in from the side mixed with PRP. That's how I do it, tiny amounts underneath that muscle. You want to avoid sticking in the muscle because muscles bleed. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, you do facelifts as well? Absolutely. Okay, you do all types of facelifts? Yes, okay. but the big, the big one now is the mini lift. Everybody wants the mini lift with the maxi result. So I'm not cutting way back in the hairline anymore or way up here, and I'm getting great results. It's actually harder to do a mini, a good mini, than it is to do the maxi. The mini, you're working in a tight space. Is that for the younger patient? Uh, not necessarily. I just did a um, uh, patient 80 years old with a so mini. So mini lifts are neck and jowls mainly? A mini can be anything from the lifestyle type thing where we just make a little cut right along here, here and just pull a little bit. That can be a mini. Or a mini neck would be up here back to the mid-ear but not cutting all the way back here anymore. I have people after any of the lifts I do, the mini type, face and or face neck, going out with their girlfriends in a day or two to have lunch. After their mini lifts. That's right. And with the so big lifts, So when I see these it. national commercials, right. that, I mean, you see that all the time in your practice. Yeah. These type of facelifts. Yeah. Now, now, you know, people will email us too, and they always ask me, who should I go to? I say go to an expert, go to somebody with the right credentials. But I think if you're going to get a PRP, or if you're going to get minimally invasive facial rejuvenation, go to somebody that also does facelifts. This is my opinion. Because that way they could give you an opinion to do what's right rather than, you know, because if you go to a guy that doesn't do facelifts. I don't think I can top what you just said. If you go to somebody that just does one thing, whether okay. it's a facelift 
or non-invasive. And I have a million dollars of lasers and light-based uh, devices in my practice for skin tightening, for whatever. There's the Rona laser for healing. I have all of those things. That means I can offer someone opportunities. I can offer options. If you have, you're just cut and you don't have lasers, okay, then you're, everybody's going to be offered a facelift. And if you don't, and even women who have less than I have right here, Jolly, they're going to be offered the full deal and the bralette. If somebody just has lasers, they don't do any cutting surgery, it's like you give a baby a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But here's my problem, okay, and as a lay person, I see a lot of this going on, that a woman, 55, 60, she's had a rough life, for whatever reason, maybe she's cleaned up her act, okay, really fallen face. She goes to a guy that doesn't do facelifting at all, and they fill her, fill in all the creases, but she still has, the, now she has an odd yeah. fallen face. I see it all the time. Okay. I see, I saw a and, woman And that come I in. think is going to yeah. be the problem with this new PRP. They're going to be going to people that, that everything is filling, filling, filling. That's right. When in some cases you got to lift the face, right? Exactly. Okay. And now some people will say, do everything you can without really cutting on me. And I'll do that. But they need to be consented. They need to understand what we can do and what we can't do. We can make the skin look better, but if there's just too much of it, they may need to have some removed. We just, um, we just worked on a, a gentleman, 70 year, almost 70 year old gentleman, and I took two inches out of each side of his face. It sounds like a lot, but now he looks great. He was can like a, guy a sharp bald. Egg. Can a guy ba uh, bald? Where do you hide their, their incisions? Well, uh, for, for these mini facelifts. For mini facelifts, doesn't include the temporal lift portion, and so I'm not cutting up here where he would have there. I'm not brow lifting where you would see small incision scars here. So the, the mini is just right here on a man, a little bit in front of here at the edge of the beard. Okay. Because you don't want him shaving right here on, on this tragus, it's called, of the ear. But women go behind the tragus, around here, and just, just up the back. Sometimes it ends here if, if they don't have anything going on here. Sometimes I need to tie those little bands on the front, underneath the skin. Usually I don't. Often I do these awake now. Is that right? I'll do the bands, I'll do the mini face. Do you have an operating room where you are? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah uh, operating room on site. I, I, it's hard for me to understand why doctors take people away to a surgery center an hour away. Well, if they can't afford an operating room. Well, I just don't understand it because I think working with your own staff that you've worked with for years, is the, 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 the trained staff is the safest way to go. Behind your back, by the way, I talk about you sometimes. And, 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 I, and, I, and I was expecting negative stuff, but they said, this guy does things by the book. You know, he, he's Wait, worried what, about. What's no, he expecting? I do. Him? No, well, I just thought, you know, they were going to say, oh, he, but people think that, yeah, he's always looking for the next That's true. best thing. Yeah. Not just, you know, a gimmick. Because my first impression, I thought, is this gimmicky vampire lift? But, uh, oh, that's no. right, because you first heard it. I, I talked to you about it. I was worried about there. the vampire. I wouldn't even allow you to talk about the vampire that's lift right. on, on my other show. That's right. I didn't want people to get the wrong impression. That's right. But it, it's much hotter now. This is going to be much bigger. Uh, through next summer, this this vampire left. Now it's not the only way to Are do it. Are they going to rename it, by the way, at all? Yeah, it's, it's good. It, you know, PRP lift. What's wrong the, with PRP the PRP lift? The PRP lift is fine. Uh, the, see, the vampire lift, and I, I want to reiterate, is using filler, Juvederm or Restylane, in the cheeks, under the eyes, in the nasal labial folds, in the mila labial folds, and then following it with PRP there. But I've Th that's seen specifics. Photos. Okay, but I've seen photos. We all can picture what a haggard face. Look, somebody that about 55 with a rough life. Okay. And I saw them after this vampire lift. Okay. All they did was inject this right. plasma in their right. face. Yeah. And they were fantastic. Yeah, it can really help. But they never mentioned the fillers. Can you do? I mean, you need to do the fillers. That's half the story. Okay. Um, that's the other problem is be wary of people's before and after photos and the lighting and that whole game that many people play, because if you do a flash photo on your after, you can take that same person. They look like they've been treated. No, but I look. I looked at the, this was on the news, okay. and they showed this LA guy's work, and I was going, just PRP. This is amazing. This was just was okay, just PRP. They probably had some volume. But it wasn't a miracle, but it was huge difference. Yeah. Huge. And was it immediately after, or was it weeks after? I think it was weeks after. Good, because immediately after, they're going to be volumized just from. It was from three the, months after. That's an excellent result then, and we do get good results. But usually, people need some volume in addition, unless they're really young they're younger, they still retain a lot of volume in their face. Okay, good. Now we're out of time. They could get you where?
Again, uh, what lunch, website? Lunchtimemakeovers.com or just, just call information, Newport Beach, Dr. Thomas Barnes. Is it a free consult? Can they go see you? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you have time to see them? Oh, yeah. Okay. What do you do for fun, by the way? Because all you talk about is PRP. I mean, do you... Uh, Dr. Inject, Barnes, inject what does PRP, he do for fun? I, for fun. For fun. What are your hobbies? I like, we rollerblade. We swim. We have a four-year-old daughter. That's my hobby. She keeps us active. You know, and I look at her face every day, and I, and I think about that. You know, look <laughs> at a little child's face. The amount of soft tissue. They smile. You don't even see a line or wrinkle. Because wrinkling isn't just about the sun. It's about the loss of the infrastructure of the face. The fat, the thinning of the muscles, as you said, the thinning of the dermis and of the skin. And by using these natural healers, cell therapy, we're actually causing that tissue to regenerate itself. So there you go. There's our full circle of this whole show. Natural healing. So somebody 40 with right. PRP every few months, maybe some laser technology, maintenance, sunblock, eating right, maybe bioidentical hormones, good nutrition, whatever, sleep. Right. right. You can make that 40-year-old stay looking that way, what, 50, 60 years old? Well, that's what we hope. Now, now I'm not going to... What's your belief, though? I, mean, I your believe, personal belief. I use it myself. Can I say anything else over that? I mean, I can't I mean, say I had a guy on my show one time that said, Randy, I think I could take a 40-year-old, and they're going to look pretty much that age until they're about 70. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that way, way out there? Uh, I think it depends on the person, too. It depends on okay. what they're doing when we're not with them. That's what, you know, Jerry Springer, when I met him, because I've done a lot of TV <laughs> in my time, I said, how can you were you on the Jerry Springer show? No, he, he's met. Yeah, okay. I met him and we had a long talk together. I said, you're a lawyer, you're a broadcaster. How do you feel about doing a show like this? He says, you know, Tom, uh, at least when they're on the set with me, I know where they are and what they're doing. Okay? <laughs> the I same agree. thing. We, we don't know when, when the patients aren't with us what they're doing, how much they're drinking, how much they're smoking, if they are. Okay. And all of these things accelerate aging. But what you're saying is in the right direction. The better we take care of ourselves, the more natural healing we can do. If we need a little facelift or a little tightening to achieve the result that will help us feel better or more competitive in our jobs or just better about life, I think that's all good. That's what we do. That's what you want to do. Look natural. Natural. And, and these low down times, somebody could come in on a Friday, get the PRP, back to work, and fillers, and back to work on Monday? Next day. The next day? Next day. Mini lift, two or three days. And what about a guy? Same. Now, see, I wore makeup so I could, get, I could uh, go to work the next day. Okay. But they could go to work the next day after the PRP? Yeah. And the laser? Well, it depends on what laser. We have the Pelave, which is great for skin tightening, even greater because it activates the, the PRP, uh, the platelets under the skin after we inject. One other thing, rollers are back. The rollers where we stamp with little pins in the skin, then we take the PRP and we rub it into those little pin spots all over the face. For men with thinning hair, we're doing that now. We're rolling it around the hairline and we're taking the PRP and we're just rubbing it into the scalp. We're also injecting, but the little roller or the little press with the little pins hurts less. Now everybody's afraid of, uh, you know, well, the science isn't there yet. The studies aren't there The studies yet. are there. The science is there. there. There's, There's a guy, DeYarman, in San Diego. He's one of the, probably the busiest hair transplant guys in, in, by far in San Diego. He's been using PRP for two years. Absolutely. Just like And I he said. loves it. And he said, Randy, yeah. they, get, they heal faster. That That's redness right. is gone. That's right. I talked to other guys across the country. BS, the science isn't there. Remember the guys at Harvard University who said there's nothing to that stem cells and PRP for treatment of your knees to my friend. Okay. They're just not taking five minutes to Google. And that is a problem. If I, if I must get myself a little hot water here with the intellectuals out there, uh, the elitists in the universities, if they don't get given money to do a specific study, they sit on their butts until they get it. We physician innovators are moving ahead, not getting paid a dime to do a study because of our intellectual curiosity of how we can make things better for our patients. How can we push the frontier forward with natural healing, cell therapy, regenerative cells? PRP is part of that movement. Your hair transplant guy has a lot of data. I have tons of data. I have data coming out of Peru with Dr. Augusto Brazzini, who's a friend of mine, who's treating people with Parkinson's with bone marrow stem cells, getting a 50% reduction in all of their symptoms, lasting four to six months every time he injects them. Now, that's amazing information, but you will have people in the university saying, we're not ready, the data's not there. So, I tell people, keep looking, keep looking. The information's coming out almost every day about the future of regenerative therapy. Could anybody say anything negative about PRP? 
Because you're using your own blood, spinning it, putting in the uh, these uh, yeah, fire well, cells, I guess. That's one more subject. There, could, there are eight I mean, we only have two minutes, but what okay. can you tell me? There are at least six, there are others coming out, different companies that have PRP. The most important thing, what is PRP? What levels of platelets are in that specimen from you? And it's, we say it's minimum of three times native levels. Whatever your levels of natural platelets, and by the time, every time you have a, a platelet, a complete blood count, a CBC, they have a ballpark figure of your platelets, the levels. And it's usually between 180,000 up to 350,000, okay? okay? Now, if somebody has an average of 250,000 platelets in their blood per micro, uh, microliter, okay? So when they spin it? Well, they, when they check in the lab and they say you have 300,000 per it. microliter, okay? We look at the CBC, okay, they're not high, they're not low. Now we have another way to think about platelets with PRP. You want at least three times that, 900,000 in your specimen to get what we think is an efficient result, to be active, okay? To promote the, the improvement of the tissue. Some of these companies claim they do six times and up to 12 times. So it matters what company, uh, what company's product your doctor uses Could you as give well. a name of one that you like right now? Uh, yeah, I like a couple of them. I like uh, Region Labs out of Germany. It's a great product because it's really easy to use. Okay. I like Harvest Technologies, and I work with both of them, by the way, uh, for papers we have coming out. Studies, pushing the frontier forward out of my little old office, not Harvard University, okay? Out of my little office, physician innovations going all over this country right now, going everywhere. Um, those are two, two good ones, I think. There okay, are others. Good. Those are the ones, I have others in my office. Those are the ones that I'm using. Okay. So follow you on Facebook, Dr. Thomas Barnes. Lunchtimemakeovers.com, Lunchtimemakeovers Newport Beach, that John Ritter looking cosmetic surgeon. You look like John Ritter. You're I also known for doing Burt Reynolds facelift. Is that correct? I'm kidding. Good. I Thank you. Throw, I had to throw that. And Kenny Rogers, right? <laughs> you didn't do that. No, those but guys I have either. worked on people, but I can't tell you who. All right. I want to thank you again. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Appreciate Up it. Up next, stick around. We have a quick interview uh, with America's pharmacist. We'll be right back.